that I think maybe less than a year later, Paul would be dead. Yeah. He, he died in 89, I believe. Yeah. I think of a heart attack and here's what I remember about Paul Bosch's death. And I don't know if Bruce will even, uh, tell you that Bruce went back to Houston to the funeral, which I was told. And I was told this, um, uh, that Bruce was, once he got to Houston, was not allowed to go to the funeral because of the bad blood that existed. Yeah. It hurt Bruce's feelings. I mean, um, yeah, that's terrible. Bruce, that's terrible, he, when he finally got to be, um, on the cover of the WWF magazine, his brother love, mm-hmm. he mailed a copy to Mr. Bosch and Mr. Bosch scratched out on the outside of the envelope and, and wrote return to sender and sent huh. it right back. But what's crazy is if you go to Bruce's house now, he's got a little home studio where we do our podcast. And then he's got like a formal office outside of it. And literally everything in there, floor to ceiling is Paul Bosch and Houston wrestling. Mm. Like in, in, in Bruce's professional life, there have been two sort of work dads, two mentors, two guys who deserve all the credit for his success. And it's Paul Bosch and Vince McMahon in that order. Yeah. And I think at the end of his life, Mr. Bosch felt like, you know, Bruce had abandoned him and turned his back. But the reality is Mr. Bosch was selling out and getting out of the business. And and Bruce had an opportunity to continue to pursue his dreams. And obviously the WWF was still running strong. And I'm sure Bruce has no regrets in that regard with his decision, but I'm sure he wished that, you know, things were better between him and Mr. Bosch. Now, ultimately they were with, uh, with Paul's widow. I mean, Paul's widow was. She felt horrible about the way everything had gone down with Bruce and him. And, you know, she wasn't as attached to the wrestling business and didn't take it as personally as Mr. Bosch did, but you know, it sucks. It's one of those things and you hate to hear those type of stories, but they exist. Yeah. Uh, and I had heard that we hear so many things that Nick Bockwinkle was the one that told Bruce, you're not allowed at the funeral. Um, I don't know if, I don't know what that, that means has anything to do with anything, but I remember hearing that. Um, and I thought, wow, that's terrible. Cause you know, uh, I know we work for competing companies, Yes, but I really, I mean, Bruce, I consider Bruce a friend always yeah, have. Absolutely. Um, Bruce and I've been, you know, he was my boss and he and I have been very good. I don't see enough of him, uh, that's just the way it is. 